Okay, adding fractions with unlike denominators using Legos, all right? Um, I'm going to use this example just to start out with. We've got 2 fourths plus 3 sixths, okay? And I'm going to use Legos to demo this, just to really zero in on that conceptual knowledge we want students to have moving forward. So I'm going to start by building my 2 fourths, okay? First, I'm going to start with my denominator, there, which are fourths. Put right there is my Lego 1, 2, 3, 4. How many of them are there? There's two. So here's my Lego representation of two fourths. There's one, two, one, two, three fourths. Okay. Next, I'm going to build my three sixths. I'm going to start with my denominator. There's my sixth, one, two, three, four, five, six. How many do I have? I have three. So I'm going to take my three Lego and put it right there. All right. So I have my two fourths plus my three sixths. Now we all remember. Um, and some of us are actively teaching it, this trick. we got to find a common denominator. And so we ask students to list all the multiples. Okay? Um, and it doesn't really do much for students' conceptual thinking. They, like, why do we find these numbers in order to add fractions? Okay? Also, if you have students that maybe don't have, maybe you're starting fractions in third grade, maybe you're a fourth grade teacher, and students just don't have their multiples down, where this is a convenient or even a productive way for students to find a common denominator. Let's work and start with their conceptual, building their conceptual knowledge, okay? So I'm going to scoot this down here, and I'm going to use my Legos to find which denominator is common for these two fractions. Okay, and I'm going to, le I'm going to leave this down here so you can kind of see um, the why. A lot of times we don't give students the why, why we do these fancy math tricks, okay? I'm just going to take my denominators. I'm going to start with 6. I'm going to put 6 right here. And I'm, as you watch me do this, I'm doing the same thing as this trick, except I'm also building a conceptual knowledge of why that trick works. So the next I'm going to take my 4, I'm going to stack it on top of the 6. Okay? I'm going to keep building out these uh, denominators until they match or they become common. Okay, So there's still a gap of 2 right there. I'm going to go ahead and add my 4 right there. Okay, no, there's a gap there. I'm going to have to add another 6. So there's my 6. Okay, now I've got to fill out the gap. I'll try another 4. Uh, and look, they match. I found my denominator. So now let me see what I've got there. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Or your you know, more proficient students might say, oh, there's two 6s and three 4s. They're both 12. So they found their common denominator. Okay, now that brings us to our next trick. Like, How do I take my two 4s? and turn it into 6 twelfths. Well, we just found out that 12 is our common denominator. How many fours did it take to get to 12? Well, it took 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I'm going to build out that fraction right here. There's my 3 fours. It took my den three of my denominators. How many of my numerators would that be? So, there, okay, I'm going to add three of my numerator. 1, two, three, and there we go. I multiplied both my numerator and my denominator by three, and I'm going to get six, one, two, three, four, five, six, twelfths, twelve. Okay, also for three, six, how many six did it take to build out to our common denominator? One, two. Okay, so I'm going to build that out right here. Here's my one, two, six. Okay, there it is. There's one, two. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need two of my three. I'm going to build that out. One, two. And what does that give me? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Three times two is six. And there's six times two, which is going to give me 12. Okay, the last step I might have students take is I'm going to take both the fractions I built. I'm just going to rebuild them one more time, but I'm going to build them on top of each other this time. So I've got my... One, two, three, fourths, and I'm just going to take the same thing right there. One, two, three, four, or excuse me, one, two, three. I got my or three, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, twelfths. Okay, and then I've got my other one. There's my other twelve. I needed one, two of those. Okay, have them build them on top of each other like that, and then. You can ask students, what can I what can I see with these? I'm going to add these two together, okay? 
Um, these are both 12s. I'm just going to simply, you can have them take one away and add it right there. And what do I have? I have 12 12s, which would equal one whole. If you want to have them build them all on top of each other like this to kind of see that, yes, we multiplied everything, but yes, there's our 12s, there's our 12s. When I add up all of our 12s, we get 12 12s, which equal one whole.